Whatever God has spoken over your life, he has the power to make it a reality because what God planned, he makes stand. If I had my way, if I had any say, if it was up to me, if I could, then I certainly would. Yeah, if I ruled the world. One of the toughest positions to be in in life is to have a great plan, but have no power to make it stand, to know how to change something, but not have the authority to do anything about it, to know how to make it better, but not have the title to make it so, to know how to fix it, but not have the juice to make it happen, to know the right way, but have no sway, to know what to do, but it's not up to you. When you have the right idea, but not the right resources, the right design, but not be able to produce the right objective, but not be able to implement the right strategy, but not be able to execute the right dream, but just can't make it a reality. The right seeds, but just can't make them grow. It's when you have the brains, but you just don't have the brawn, the wisdom, but not the weight, the love, but not the leverage, the care, but not the control, the commitment, but not the clout, the sacrifice, but not the significance, the passion, but not the power. It's when you have the right cause, but no way to affect. It's when you have input without impact because you are without influence. Oh, what good is it? to have a plan that you can't make stand, to be willing, but also weak, to not be able to follow through and make it do what it do, to set out, but can't carry out or bring about, to not have the dominion, the sovereignty, autonomy, or authority to make things happen. In fact, that's exactly why we protest to speak truth to the power that we don't have ourselves. It's why we petition to get the attention of the powers that be when it's not up to you and me. In fact, it's precisely why we pray. To ask, to seek, to appeal, to plea, to cry out, to call on the power of all powers, to intervene on our behalf to show up and show out, to step in and do for us that which we cannot do for ourselves. Psalm 61 and 2 says, From the ends of the earth I call to you. I call as my heart grows faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. In those times when we would if we could, but we just can't, we call on the God who doesn't have can't in his vocabulary, the God who can do all things but fail, the God who can do the impossible and then turn around and do it again, the God who makes plans that are more than we could ever ask or think, the God who makes plans that always pan out and work out, the God who makes plans that can, the God who never makes a plan that he won't also make stand. God planned for Abraham to be the father of many nations. God planned for him to be the patriarch of the promise. God planned for his descendants to outnumber the very stars in the sky. And God made that plan stand through Isaac, then Jacob, the 12 tribes, including Joseph and the Messianic lineage of Judah. And the rest stands in history. God planned for his people to not remain as slaves in Egypt indefinitely. And he made that plan stand 
by raising up Moses, by being the God of miracles, signs and wonders, by parting the Red Sea, by making Pharaoh let my people go. God planned for his people to not be stuck as wilderness wanderers as their final destiny. Because instead, he had planned a promised land, and he made that plan stand by parting the Jordan River. He made that plan stand by bringing down the walls of Jericho. He made that plan stand by being with Joshua, just as he was with Moses. After the fall in Genesis 3, God planned for us to not be separated from him in our sin forever. And he personally made that plan stand by sending himself, by sending his very own son. He made that plan stand by becoming a man. He made that plan stand through nail scarred hands. He made that plan stand by rising again. He made that plan stand through the once and for all atoning blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus plan for his disciples, for his church, to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth. And he made that plan stand by promising to be with us always. He made that plan stand on Pentecost by the sending of Holy Ghost power that still stands today. So even if it takes giving himself, going himself. He will make his plan stand, even if he has to flip over some tables, even if he has to roll some stones, even if he has to move heaven and earth. He will make his plan stand. If it takes the supernatural, if it takes miracles, if it takes power, power, wonder-working power, if it takes him doing what only he can do, being what only he can be, if it takes God just being God, whatever it takes, what he plans, he makes stand, as we see in our text. Here in chapter 14 of the book of Isaiah, we find God speaking through his prophet Isaiah to his people, to tell them, even in the midst of their judgment, even in the midst of their downturn and downfall, he would still have mercy, still have compassion, still be for them and still choose them. Basically, he had no plans to change the plans he had for them, showing us that even if it takes forgiveness, even if it takes giving us a second chance, even if it takes some amazing grace, God will make his plan stand. So in the chapter, God plans out exactly what he was going to do to help his people stand back up and get back on the right track by first getting rid of their oppressors like Babylon, the Philistines, and specifically Assyria, starting here in verse 24, where the Lord says, The Lord Almighty has sworn, Surely as I have planned, so will it be. And as I have purposed, so it will happen. And in the next verse, verse 25, God reveals the details of what that plan was to liberate his people from Assyrian oppression. He said that he would break them out of the land and remove their yoke, remove their burden off of his people's shoulders, showing that even if he has to fight for us, even if he has to show us that the battle is his and not ours, he will make his plan stand. So then in verse 27, God seals that plan with an authoritative declaration showing that it was going to stand. Verse 27 says, For the Lord Almighty has purposed, and who can thwart him? His hand is stretched out, and who can turn it back? Allow me to translate. What God plans, he makes stand. For who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. Who can erase? Who can nullify? Who can veto? Who can overrule, override, overturn, turn back what God has planned? Well, I'll give you a hint. The answers all start with no. 
as in no one, no thing, nobody, no way, no how. Once God sets it in motion, it shall be. Once God plans, it shall stand. It's not like in football where you can challenge the call and the ref can go look at and review the replay and overturn the ruling on the field. No, you can review what God said all you want and you can second guess him all you want and you can challenge him if you want to, but I would not recommend it because you'd only be wasting your time because if it's his plan, then it is going to stand. What God wills, will stand. What God says, what God declares, what God decrees, stands. God says in Isaiah 55, 10 to 11, as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth it will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. When God moves, there is no voting him down. The nays have no say. God's motions always carry. Yes, El Shaddai has it, and it is so ordered, because what God plans always stands. But unlike God, Our plans so often do not stand. As the old saying goes, the best laid plans of mice and men often go awry. That's why we so often have plan B's and contingencies and backup plans. That's why we have stuff like rain checks. Think about how many times the weather alone has completely altered your plans. So sorry, new addition. No, our plans can't stand the rain. Some of y'all will get that joke. But our planning is so often very frail and fickle and often highly tentative because we don't even know what the next second will hold, much less the next day. Like so many of us had big plans in 2019 for 2020. But then the pandemic hit. And to say it caused a change of plans would be an understatement. That's why James 4, 13 to 15 says, Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow, we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. What we plan, we can always make stand because it's so often over our heads and out of our hands. But if the Lord said it, if the Lord promised it, if the Lord planned it, you can count on it because what God plans for you, he'll make stand for you. God famously says in Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And he makes those plans stand. In Philippians 1, 6, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. So having done all to stand, you just stand, trusting in God's power to make things stand. Though the vision tarry, he'll make it come to pass. Though the waiting is wearying, he'll make it worth your while. Though the delay may cause dismay, in time he'll make your day. Though now you feel like the least, he'll make the most out of you. Though now you feel like a nobody, he'll make a somebody out of you. And though they say, you have no say. Jehovah has the final say, and he alone will make a way. Whatever the links, whatever the stakes, whatever it takes, what God plans, 
he'll make stand. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and follow us on Facebook and YouTube.